Well, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who really cares about every one of us and would love to greet us more and more with the greatness of his presence and plans for each one of us individually. We, we just have to come to him and listen. Part of listening to him is listening to the written word that comes from God himself, all inspired by God. Today, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians 1.30. However, I invite you to bow for just a brief moment, calling on the Lord to lead us. And we do call and expect you to lead us and seek you, dear God, to bring your presence, your love, your sweetness, your grace into the presence of every heart. Touch everyone listening today to the reading and sharing of your word to hear you speaking to them, to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So the title of today's lesson is Redeemed. And you see uh, the choice of that word comes from 1 Corinthians 1.30. But by his grace, you are in Christ. Where? You are in Christ. Are you in Christ? By his grace, you can be. He invites you. He wants you to live in him. He wants to live in us and have us to live in him. So beginning again, but by his doing, you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, it wasn't something we did ourselves, was it? He does it. You are in Christ who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He did it all. And he continues to do all for his people. Redeemed. <clears throat> on the wall of the sanctuary here at Bethesda Church, on the left side is a banner portraying Christ, the Lamb of God. While on the right side, another banner portrays Christ, the Lion of Judah. But between those banners is a large cross signifying Christ, our Redeemer. On the cross, in his great love, Jesus paid the price to redeem us from all the powers of Satan and bring us to God, our Father. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Job, living before Jesus was manifested in the flesh, long before, <clears throat> was given grace to proclaim, quote, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will take his stand on the earth. That's Job 19.25. This strong faith surely helped him to endure through his trials. <clears throat> now that our Redeemer has come, our Redeemer has come, believers may abide in him, and from him draw countless blessings, including the Holy Spirit, peace, power, confidence, grace to hear him, and much more. The Redeemer, our Redeemer reigns. Humanity, born to be close to God, was separated from him at the fall of Adam in the garden. Born to be close to God, but separated from him at the garden. But Christ, our Redeemer, set us free from the enemy to bring us to God. Now, in Christ, we draw from his life. Again, when we are in Christ, we draw from his life. When we're outside of Christ, we cannot do that. We draw from all sorts of things. 
but he brings us into himself and we draw from him. After the fall, the heart, our hearts, humanity's heart, after the fall, the heart ceased to reign as was intended by God in his design, that the spiritual part, the heart would reign over the rest of the, uh, the body. After the fall, the heart ceased to reign as it was designed by God, and the flesh became dominant. But in Christ, his spirit overcomes the fall and establishes our heart to reign in him. So he redeemed us and brings us back to what we had and what was taken away from us is redeemed. But then he places in the he puts us in the place then where we can be blessed with greater blessing than we even had before we fell in Adam. <clears throat> Christ alone is the Redeemer and having put on humanity and paying the redemption price, he sits for us on the throne with all power given to him, all power given to him, even endless life for his family. He is there for his family. He is there for us to be in him and to share in his great and awesome accomplishments for us. Jesus is reigning and communicating victory to believers through faith in him. Faith alone receives what he is giving. This grand victory is not just a great story, which it is, but it is the present life of the ongoing communication of blessings to people of faith from their Redeemer. Again, it's the ongoing communication of blessings to people of faith from their Redeemer. Are you expecting? Are you hearing? Are you receiving? As above mentioned, Job, he believed in his Redeemer and expected his ultimate victory. So too, believers expect, they look forward to his final defeat of all evil. However, abiding in him means we begin to partake of him now. now, now let's not, not miss that. Abiding in him means that we begin to partake of him now. He's communicating himself, his blessings, all that he gains, communicating it to us for whom he came and died. What Christ began, he completes. And because he is doing that in us now, we may live expectantly receiving even now the powers of the age to come. So, while it is Christ alone who is our Redeemer, we grow into all the fullness of that redemption by faith, expecting wonders from Him. And the Holy Spirit is in us to do that, to bring us to expect wonders from Him and to receive them, but to begin to expect before we see, because faith deals in that realm of the unseen, another realm. Faith believes before we see. His family, Jesus' family, flourishes. Those receiving from him flourish. So as David did, we may eat and drink at his table, which we know from Jesus' own words, that, that means we are really partaking of our Lord himself. His, his words given at the Passover time, at the communion. He is putting his powers into us, 
Do you believe that? Do you receive that? He's putting his powers into us. He's building his church, the church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, the church shining for him, a shining light for others in the end time. Instead of like Adam and Eve, without the power of the Spirit reigning, we are in Christ who receives our spirit, soul, and body as His so that they may partake of Him now. Notice that. Not just the Spirit. Our spirit, soul, and body, our entire being, He wants to partake of Him now. He does not want us to simply shelve all this power as for, well, that's for the future. That's for when he returns. No, instead, he wants our entire being to re be receiving more and more now. Psalm 92, 13 promises, quote, we will flourish in the courts of our God. Psalm 92, 13 we will flourish in the courts of our God. Do you need to take off all those promises that you've put up on the shelf as something high and above for the future and begin to walk in them now? He will, he will give them to us and keep giving them to us. And yes, He will fulfill and bring us all to be just like him in his image. But we need to believe him now and begin to walk in what he has done. The scripture says we have come. Notice, notice. Now we will come. We have come to. Come where? We have come to. This again, the quote from, from scriptures. The city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to myriads of angels. To God. And to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Do we understand that being in such a place by faith changes us, body, soul, and spirit into Christ's likeness? Yes, uh, the Lord wants us to pray for the sick, and bring his power and love to them. But we tend to focus on, on that and miss that he wants us to live in this great growing power of his presence, keeping us in greater and greater strength and health, our, our body, soul, and spirit. When Abraham was naming the place, where the Lord substituted a ram for Isaac. He called it, the Lord will provide. And God did. Now we have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. The word says, we have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And surely we can believe that the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Not just spiritual. Body, soul, and spirit. The Lord will provide for his people. He will provide abundantly for the inheritors of the fullness of Christ. Again, we live in... He's calling us to live in Him now, to partake of Him now, to live in this place of the love of God keeping us, keeping us out of fear and things that are disruptive to, to the, the, this whole body, soul, and spirit that He has made. So He wants the body even to be enjoying His presence now, flowing into us and our entire being getting flooded with his love. Abel's blood called for justice, but Christ calls for our inheriting everything. His shed blood, he redeemed us to bring us out from all the power of the enemy, but into the realm of the presence of God, living indeed even in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. 
This is beyond the limitations of natural humanity. But we're not, if we're in Christ, we're not limited to the natural humanity. Just as when Jesus came here and became a human in every respect, he was not limited to natural hum humanity because he was in touch with God the Father. He was having communication with God the Father. God was strengthening him and keeping him and guiding him. And so that's what he wants to be doing in your life and my life. Even the psalmist long ago confessed to God, quote, You will enlarge my heart. Did you know your heart can be enlarged? Yes, as you keep drawing more and more of God into your heart, what's going to happen? He's going to enlarge the heart to give you more. He doesn't just give us enough to fill what we've got and say, that's it, and go off to something else. No. Remember, he's enlarging our heart to more and more of him till finally when he finishes, we are just like him in his image. Are you growing in the image of Christ by expecting great things to happen? As we look to Christ, not just our hearts, not just our hearts are blessed when we look to Christ, but as we've said before, our entire self is partaking of him. Our entire self is partaking of Him. If you could, you take care of your body. Maybe we don't all do it as well as we could, but if you could fix everything in the body, you do want to do that. God loves us even so much more. He wants to care for us body, soul, and spirit. When we abide in Christ alone, seeking Him above all else, He knows about it. He knows that. He knows who's doing that. And he releases power then to those from high above to meet our needs abundantly. Oh, how he loves you and wants to be close to you and meet all your needs abundantly. Christ knows what life on earth means. He lived it. And when he did, he did not trust others. Instead, Jesus leaned wholly on the Father. No other arm, no other provider. And he led us that way. Jesus lived a human, uh, the life of a human, and yet he, he never trusted in humanity. He, he looked to God for everything. And Jesus is ready to bless those who follow in his footsteps. And his angels are ready. They're with him. His angels are ready to serve him and caring for us. The angels are right there. And they're looking to bring all more and more communicating the life, the presence, the power, and the love of our Lord into us. And they're looking at the Lord smi smiling, saying, Is this what you want, Lord? Is this, this the one to whom you want this flowing right now? They work for him to build you up into his image and likeness. Receive that truth. Now he began quoting 1 Corinthians 1.30 and I want to close by quoting it again and inviting you to draw in the truth of the Word of God. By His doing, you are in Christ who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He's your Redeemer. Amen. Bless you, folks.